Um, welcome to the science track of this year's DEPCONF. My name is Michael Bank, and I'm organizing this. I just want to say hi to everybody who came here and hopefully back home um, on, the, on the streams. Um, there's a wiki page uh, for the Debian Science and Math track at DEPCONF 10, which I just put up there. It's wiki.depconf.org, wiki DEPCONF track science. And uh, we have an IRC channel on, on ircdebian.org, hash debconf dash interschool, where you can also, if you're well here or outside of debconf, you can ask questions for the talks. So I hope uh, the stream is working. And what we can also do, and I will put up the schedule in a second, is uh, using Gobby um, for gobby.debian.net. I put up a dc10-science-track um, channel. We, there's no content yet, and I'm the only one, but if people want to join, and we can collaboratively, collaboratively take notes of the um, tracks, you need gobby-0.5 um, for that, so it might be a problem if you're running Lenny. Um, I will um, soon hand over but just saying that we got a um, couple of slots and we mixed, well, we split them up. So first, first Sylvester will uh, introduce Debian Science and uh, David will introduce Debian Math in the first um, slot and maybe David can also summarize a bit the math ball that just happened in the morning if there's time left. And then on the second slot, Go back to the to the program on the seventh second slot. Michael Hanke and Jaroslav Halchenko will present Debian from two perspectives. Debian, the ultimate platform for neuroimaging research. And at 4 p.m., we will have a split slot for new developments in data science packaging. So Adam Powell will talk about MPI packaging. Sylvester Ledru will talk about linear algebra libraries, packaging, and Yaroslav Falchenko and my Michael Hanke will talk about citation reference infrastructure. And then at the end, we will have a Debian Science Roundtable. So any well, questions or things that came up during this, or we can also try to um, flesh out the agenda during, during the, the track, we will discuss then. And if there's anything left, we can still schedule impromptu boffs tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Um, I want to thank all the people who are contributing to the track, and uh, yeah, with no further ado, I'll hand over to Sylvester. So, thank you. So, um, I'm going to talk about Debian Science because many things happened during the last two years. So, basically, here it's a series of screenshots of various things we packaged lately. Uh, I'm going to talk about that a bit deeper later. So, first, where I am, I won't bother you about that. I'm just working for Scilabs. Just see if I do some advertising about Scilabs, it's normal. It is basically what I'm paid for. I'm a Debian developer for, a few, for one year and I've been a DM for two, three years before. Uh, I'm mainly involved in science and Java, and here we are. Uh, first, I'd like to explain what is Debian science because it is pretty unclear from the point of view you are looking at what is Debian science. So first, uh, what I'm working on mainly is a, is a team Debian science, so it is hosted at Elliot. Uh, there are about 70 people registered to this project. We are basically have 130 packages. And uh, the main main list is uh, the one uh, you can see on the screen. So it's Debian minus science at least dot Debian dot org. Uh, after that, Debian is also can be also seen as other teams because some people have been working on on specific science field for the last few years. So one of the biggest is Debian Med. It's 
mainly uh, managed by uh, Andrea, hello Andrea, because he's probably watching at us, and Charles Plessy. So uh, they are packaging a lot of packages so for a while. Another team is also Debichem. Okay, I think it's mainly Michael work. Uh, it's about chemistry in Debian. And uh, the last one, I'm going to talk about that a bit, a bit deeper later, is a uh, package science comp. It's mainly about uh, numerical computing. So it used to be 60 packages, now it's 30, it's normal. It is what we are trying to do. So the goal of Debian science, or the Debian science team, here I'm talking mainly about the team. So the, the goal is to package the best software and libraries in these different fields. So there are many, many pretty good so Swiss software releasing because on my point of view, at least, from my uh, R&D project manager, I can see that uh, government are like Europe and France, because it's the two stuff I, pretty, I know pretty well, they are pretty uh, happy to give money to finance free software projects in science. And it's very common that the French government is giving a lot of money to finance free projects. So we are trying to uh, reach the same level as quality as proprietary software. I know it's not the case in other free software area, where free software are better, for example, Apache and so on. But in science software, they usually were a bit less uh, good because proprietary software are very expensive. For example, a MATLAB license with an extension called Simulink is about uh, 18,000 euros per license, per computer. So it's pretty expensive. So corporation and state are happy to finance. So we are starting to get more and more very high quality software which are usable for a Lambda user, not for an IT guy or something like that. So we are trying also to create, to package um, things in various sectors of science, so like math, physics, simulation, modelization, and so on. Um, and one of the things which is pretty important, and we talk a lot about that this morning, is to create some kind of glue. So how you can call one software from the other, uh, how you can do that, how you can manage such things. Uh, the two first examples that you can see on the screen is Salome and Codaster. I'm going to talk about a bit deeper about these two software because they are pretty important in France and in Europe because they are produced by EDF, which is one of the most big corporations in the world about nuclear. So they've got a lot of money to work on this. Uh, other things in the Debian science that we try to do, and I'm doing that on a daily basis in France, is connect people. So it's important to, when you know that some people are working on this software and others are working on something similar, just to put them in touch. You never know what can happen. Sometimes it will take two or three years. It is basically what happened with Salome packaging. But uh, sometimes people start to work together and produce some amazing results. And also, we are trying to educate. I don't really like the word educate, but we are trying to uh, explain to upstream how distribution are working. We all had one package once where the upstream was included sources just because it is so convenient for them. But for us, it is very boring, so it is a lot of work. So we are trying to explain them why they should not include uh, third-party sources into their base code and so on. And also, we are trying to make them understand that it is very important for us that they accept our patch. So, for example, if their building system is broken, it's very important for the future maintenance that they accept our patch as soon as possible. Otherwise, it will get very boring to update when they are doing a new release, which is fantastic, but they, are, they change everything inside. Um, first, I'm going to... Sorry. Then, I'm going to talk about the history of Debian Science. Uh, the basic start was done by Andreas when he started to do uh, CDD. It used to be custom Debian distribution. He started that a long time ago, and now it is called Debian Blend. So it is, for me, it is really the start of Debian science. I'm, by this, I mean the, the creation of uh, the basic packaging tools and environment and uh, community around this into Debian. And after that, thanks to uh, Andreas' report, support, we started to uh, Oh, sorry, I'm going to explain quickly what is Blends because I realize that not everybody knows what it is. Uh, it is my understanding of Blends because it's not very obvious to understand. It is just to uh, put together and reference all scientific software. Don't hesitate to interrupt me if I'm wrong or if I'm missing things. But uh, it is basically in one field. Uh, we are trying to reference all the good software who are, which are in the archive, but also the one we want to package in the future. So uh, if I see a great software, but I don't have time to package it, I will put it into a task file of Blend, saying, oh, this one should be packaged. Here it is, what is the description, and so on. 
So it really helps to reference what are the scientific software, the free scientific software that we could package, and, and that's it. So uh, we created the, the team on Halyot uh, in the beginning of uh, 2008. Uh, now, as I say, we are more like we are more than 70 people. Uh, we are packaging about 130 packages. Uh, Manuel Prince and I, we, pack we wrote a policy in uh, mid-2008. Uh, so the policy is very standard, so we are not seeing much. And it's pretty outdated, so if some people want to help on this, to update it and to uh, make it more uh, 2010, it will be nice. So I'm going to quickly talk about a few work we've done in the science team. So one of the first one is work on MPI stuff. Um, I'm not going into the detail because Adam is going to do that later, but MPI is basically a norm and many vendors are implementing this, this norm. And uh, we, in Debian, we had a lack of coordination around the various MPI implementation. So we started to address this issue. It's not over because we have some migration to do, but it's going pretty well. Uh, the linear algebra, it is me who I'm going to do a talk later, but it's pretty much the same thing. Various implementation and co lack of coordination and uh, work on this. Uh, Open Cascade is a work has been done uh, mainly by Denis Barbier, and I think Adam helped pretty much. It is a, a huge library to do a CAO uh, concep uh, conception assisted by computer. This is in French, sorry. And, uh, and uh, this, it is a used library 3D, which is widely used in France in some important projects. We have also Paraview, which is a visualization uh, tool. So we, we package a huge software, which is called Saturn. So I can see that Cyril is interesting in this. Uh, as I said previously, EDF is one of the world leaders in energy. And they develop many software to manage uh, the nuclear power plant in France. In France, we've got something like 65 power plant, nuclear power plant. It's the top country in nuclear. And um, since it is very expensive, they decided to extend the life period of about, about 10 to 20 years for each nuclear plant. So they had, they had a strong need of uh, numerical computing software to, uh, to do some simulation or on degradation of the component of the nuclear power plant. So they, they developed many, many different software and they released as free and open source software uh, a lot of them, like Code Saturn, Code Aster, Salome. Uh, those software are high quality, they are widely used, and uh, they are starting to be more and more used in France and in Europe. So we, we decided to package this one, and um, especially because the response from upstream was very good. When, when I, I've been in touch with them, they were saying, oh, okay, it would be great to have this into Debian, um, because they, are, they all are using Debian, the researcher, and uh, they are very interested to know what is a good way to package the scientific software. So uh, we help them a lot to know what is the right thing to do, how to package the scientific software, what, is, uh, auto, what are the auto tools, auto make, and so on. And they have been applying a lot of patch and they've been very, very reactive on the various bug reports we submitted on their software. Uh -huh. okay. So here is one of the results. So the, it is a CFD, so computation, computation fluid dynamics. They are basically, uh, here's the example, is it is into a pipe, we are injecting some CO2, some helium, and we are doing some strong computation. This software can run on clusters, so MPI can run also on my laptop. And here it is rendering done by Paraview, which is another software which is available in Debian Science. So we can do some pretty amazing stuff in this, uh, with this software. If some people are interested, I've got some uh, video and so on. One other work is uh, Salome. It is also a, a EDF software uh, that Adam started to package about two or three years ago. But uh, the up upstream response was pretty bad. Usually they didn't reply to, uh, to any emails, and Adam had about 50 patches. So we say, okay, what can we do? It will be too hard to maintain because there are about 20 or 30 people working on this, uh, on this project, so they are releasing very often and they are changing a lot of things. So the patch usually cannot apply from a version to the other. So what we did basically, we, thanks to Logilab, which is a small uh, French corporation working on Python mainly, uh, we, we started a collaboration with Adam 
and um, and Logilab and EDF because we know the people are from EDF, and we uh, we educated them basically. So we we had a long meeting explaining explaining them what how, what, how it important it is to include upstream patch, uh, downstream patches into their distribution and so on. So they've been very interested. It is very funny to see the contrast three years ago and now because now they are very happy about the inclusion of, uh, of their software into Debian. So now it is already available. Um, this one is more internal to Debian. Uh, as I said previously, we, we basically have got four teams working on science in Debian. One of them is the uh, package science comp. Um, there is a strong overlap between the two teams. It's not very easy for a newcomer, for someone who is already involved in Debian, but not in scientific field. Uh, to understand and to know where is the best place to put this packet. So we had some confusion. We also had some issue about cross mailing list discussion. Um, some packets in Debian Science are based on some library into the other distribution. Um, and also the maintainer of, the, of this group um, does not have too much time. So we decided to merge them. But it is a very long work and there is a lot of inertia. So the statue for now of the, of the merge is basically we had uh, 51 packages, now we are 33. Uh, some of them are already uh, changed from package science comp to the other one, but we still need to upload the packages. We don't want to upload this for, the, this for nothing. And it is a very slow process, because nobody wants to upload a package for nothing. So the Debian science team needs some help. So as I said, um, as the DPL said, uh, fixing RC bug is funny. Uh, we, we should also, and I think I'm not the only one who is interested in this, in this, update some documentation on our website, on our wiki, about the various teams that we've got, because it is a, a very strong confusion for people coming into Debian to see that we've basically got four teams. The wiki is not very clear about that. We've got plenty of pages. So I think we really, we really should work together to clean up this mess and to uh, show on the world that we are pretty clear about what we want to do in science. So the merge obviously has to be finished. We still have some migration to do about the MPI. I hope we will be able to do it on Squeeze, but some uh, maintainer of third-party libraries are not very uh, helpful for now. And uh, as Andrea said, previously on IRC, we still need some air on blend science to uh, update everything because it's not very, it's a long walk, walk and walk, and also some screen shooting. So um, some most fun discussions that I like to have, maybe we can do that later at the open discussion, but uh, one of the things I would like to highlight is the confusion that we've got uh, on the mailing list. We've got Debian Science and we've got the Debian Science Maintainer, and I'm afraid that the, the first mailing list is to focus for now on packaging aspect and should be more for the user of uh, the packages we've got. And maybe switch the discussion we've got about packaging or request for sponsor and so on on the Debian maintainer for, for, for the time being. The second one is not very used, so we should maybe do something. And finally, as I said previously, create a hub. So on Debian, uh, on the website, maybe say, okay, if you want to work on chemistry or in the med medical aspect, here, here is a team and so on. So maybe we should do some more advertising and so on on the, on the Debian website. So, your turn, David. Okay. Well, maybe if there's we some like questions. Take questions yeah. now. Yeah. Yes, Thanks for your talk, first. No, I can't. Is it, okay. I can just hand it over. Is there any questions? Well, I got a question. Um, the Debian Science Maintainers list, does it right now get all the bug traffic? And uh, that kind of stuff, or where yeah, is that it going? Does, but we could change that. It's no. Okay. Or we could create another one. Mm. Right. So you, I guess you. Because that that sometimes is sort of like an issue that people get flooded with that kind of stuff. But okay, on the other hand, they should probably read it anyway. Yeah. Well. Okay. But uh, for now, it's not too noisy. I think we've got mm. about one or twice per day, something like that. We don't receive okay. many bugs. Except when Cyril or Luca are and launching many builds and uh, reporting 2,000 bugs in one day. <laughs> and the upload notifications and that kind of stuff also goes. Upload, Sorry? upload notifications? Uh, yeah. That thing's so. also, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Well, for now, we don't well, have to. Anybody much can just so. filter it out if they yeah. want somewhere else. Okay. Is there, is there any other questions? 
Okay, then we'll. Yes, please. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. So, well, sign up. So we are supposed to freeze quite soon. Uh, what would be the big uh, things that you would want to do in Squeeze Plus One? Uh, fixing the ah in the Squeeze Plus One. Package more stuff. <laughs> No, I, 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 I'm not answering to your question right now because I'd like to see MPI and Atlas fixed now, not in the plus one. That would but, be nice. <laughs> yeah, but it might be for the next one, especially for MPI. I hope Atlas, I'm going to chat about that and do an upload in the next Tuesday. I hope it, it's going to be fixed pretty soon. But it is, I'd like to also package more um, library about linear algebra and start to work on GPU things, which is very efficient this day, so this is something I'd like to, to do. But I don't have, uh, I haven't saw yet about the N plus one. Any more questions? Okay, then thank you. And we'll go to the second talk. Uh, yeah, that's the one. So, I guess it's okay, the mic? Good. So, uh, I guess, I'm not sure why Michael asked me. Well, I know why, but let's not talk about that. Um, so anyway, I guess I wanted to give just a little bit different uh, perspective uh, on the rest of the things that, or at least one more aspect of what Debian Science is working on. Uh, it's a bit of an umbrella group and uh, uh, a lot of things in it are numerical, but, but not everything. And even not everything mathematical in it is numerical. So, uh, so I'm a mathematician and, <laughs> and, uh, and a Debian uh, maintainer. Uh, so, it's a bit confusing. We, we seem to have more discussions than necessary about naming, but uh, anyway, I wanted to settle the, the topic for, for my little mini talk here, so, so we decided what I'm talking about. And there's a lot of intersection between what I'm thinking about uh, as mathematical software and uh, versus new, what I'm calling numerical software, but you might also think about as scientific computing, and education, actually. There's, there's a lot of overlap. Um, when I use a tool, uh, I tend to use very, I mean, I'm lazy, right? So I use the same tools for teaching and, and for research when I can. And in particular, for making pictures, making uh, material, I think most people are the same way. So, uh, you know, probably tech is the most important piece of scientific software in existence. So this mathematical software, uh, please accept my definition at least for the next 10 minutes or so, uh, has something in common with a lot of these other efforts that Sylvester is talking about. So in particular, licensing is, is often an issue with uh, university labs and my own experience is that academics tend to make eccentric licenses, right? Uh, don't, don't use this software for evil, that, that kind of well-meaning but in the end counterproductive uh, license is quite common in this domain. We have a lot of old code. Uh, well, there's two different problems here. So Maxima is, is very old. It's maintained by Cam McGuire. He's been maintaining it for many years. Uh, it's based on GCL. He's also maintaining that. Uh, the code in, in Maxima really goes back to the 60s. So it's older than, I think, most people in this room. Uh, SageMath has a different problem, which is that it has uh, convenience copies of most of Debian uh, in it. Uh, so I exaggerate a little bit, but... Uh, so those are, the, this embedded libraries problem is a, it's a big problem for, I think, maybe everybody packaging, but it, it feels to me like it's a particular problem for work coming out of academic environments. Um, 
we're all, and this is one thing I wanted to, to mention, is that, uh, and it's something that as a, as the, it's one of the interests of the Deviant Science team is publishing. And, and I don't mean just getting things in journals, but I mean making nice documents, right? And so this is mostly tech, but also managing bibliographies, which we'll come back to this afternoon, and making uh, pictures. Uh, and I suppose not all mathematicians are very interested in high-performance computing, but, but I am. So, so there's a group of uh, experimental mathematicians, I would call us, who, who heat a lot of rooms trying to find particular mathematical objects. So we, we're searching, usually quite clumsily, some big search space and uh, running SAT solvers and, and these kinds of things. Um, and so to do that, we get involved uh, with batch. So some of you were at the batch processing box this morning. So, so there's some things in common. Some things which are a bit different is that uh, as a mathematician, uh, I publish things in journals claiming things are true based on what my computer tells me. And so if you know anything about floating point arithmetic, you know, you have to be very brave to do something like that based on floating point arithmetic. So I would say GMP is mathematician essential, right? So I don't think that you're really doing computation as a mathematician or GMP or is there any equivalent exact? It's really the standard, right? I mean, it's one area where we don't have a plethora of, of choices. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention was that we're pretty interested in non-numerical computation. Um, symbolic algebra is a topic that came up this morning in the, in the math buff. Uh, that, I mean, a lot of people are interested in just because it's a, it's a tool, a general tool that many different people use. Um, but also working with objects which are not numbers, so groups and graphs and permutations and, and other kinds of combinatorial structures. I don't know, maybe, and Sylvester, you can correct me, but I, I feel like this is true, right? That, that there's more Lisp and less Fortran in, in, the, in the code stack. You also have Lisp in, in this, well, Scilab, yeah, maybe, I don't know what's going on. So, fine, and this comes back to publishing um, by mathematical diagramming tools, I mean tools which draw correct diagrams. So, in particular, uh, the picture on the page should really be a 3D projection of, of whatever you like, and it's not about surface shading, it's about uh, giving, uh, say, equations or something that, that describe your, your figure. That's another, another aspect. Um, in my work, I, I think, or at least in the 10 minutes this morning, I thought about it, um, there's really three different ways that, that I use tools. Um, I think these are all tools in Debian. Part of it is as a software developer, and um, here I'm using, and we're all using libraries and, and language systems that, that are in Debian, um, to varying degrees of success. Right? The, the temptation to just embed upstream <laughs> libraries, therefore, even those of us who know better. Um, and uh, the other thing I think is, here there's quite a big ov overlap with educational use, and, but I think it's quite interesting because it's not programming, it's doing math. So, so again, symbolic algebra package, GAP is a kind of specialized symbolic algebra package. Uh, I'm using Haskell. Who, who here is a Haskell programmer? There's two of us, yeah, it's like that. Um, mathematicians love Haskell. Uh, I mean, uh, particularly discrete mathematicians. It, it somehow appeals to something in them. Uh, and I'm using Perl because, you know, sometimes Haskell's just too much work, so you need to do something fast. Uh, even for, you know, generating permutations of numbers and so forth, I'm sometimes using Perl for things like that. And, uh, yeah, and I think everything under here I, I mentioned already, bibliography managing, making pictures. I'm ashamed to say that I only use R for plotting. Um, I should use it for more reasonable things, but it's really good at plotting, so, so 
So that part's good. Okay, um, so I just wanted to give you a bit of a flavor of, of a sort of how Debian supports mathematicians. Um, this morning we talked a bit uh, also about mathematical software and um, there was some discussion of gluing things together. Uh, I mean that, that, that these codes uh, which are somehow a noble ambition and also a real challenge for Debian. The, these uh, omnibus packages, right, which depend on many libraries and uh, Sylvester, you mentioned already, I guess, version. I mean, th this problem of upstream requiring particular versions of libraries. And uh, to preempt the question about what do I think about, say, squeeze plus one, um, I think if we are lucky, we can get Sage packaged for, for squeeze plus one. But it really takes, it's one of, it's a typical situation where the people who are uh, most involved with creating the libraries and, and so forth and, and maintaining the individual libraries are not as motivated to use the glue package that, that puts them all together. So uh, I think we have a problem pulling together. Uh, well, so far we don't have uh, a team. Uh, it's going to take, it's a huge effort, and I think if we want Sage and Debian, there's going to be, need to be a team to pull that together. And I guess I'm kind of unvolunteering for that. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's enough from me. Thank you. Any question, comments? Yeah. Um. Quick question. So if you're talking about Sage and you've never mentioned Python, are you going to learn it? <laughs> I, I should have mentioned Python as well. I, I use Python as well. That was an omission. I use both Python and Perl. I, 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 I guess in, on the scale of quick and dirty to must be correct, I go Perl, Python, Haskell. Uh, also, have you heard about such new, well, it's not new, Fortress? I've language. heard about it. I don't know much about it. Uh, uh, okay. Well, it, besides that it was owned by Sun as well, to some extent. Okay. Silvestro? Yeah. Uh, for, for information, uh, GMP, you have also another library it's called MPFR for multi-precision library, which is uh, based on GMP but extending it. Right. GMP is kind of hostile. I don't know what the story is with that. Uh, I don't know exactly, but MPFR now is pretty good and you can use it for, to do such tasks, just for information. Okay. Isn't it in GCC or got it out of GCC? I thought it was part no, of No, this one is out. It's, it's out. a library. Okay. It's done by the INRI. I, I wonder if it's for, not from Nancy, but uh, it is uh, it's pretty good now. And it is in the archive. Okay. Uh, could can you stand up? Can you stand up? Could you comment on the exotic languages that you mentioned, like the... <laughs> sure. It, it was in quotes. Uh. Yeah, I mean, like, why is Lisp more exotic than Fortran? Yeah, like, for example, like, I mean, I have seen, like, uh, industrial production level codes that run Fortran, and people still develop Fortran. Like, do you mean, like, the, like I don't know what you meant by exotic. Okay. Like, so how many people here could, if forced, program in Fortran? Okay, now other than knowing there's lots of parentheses, who could write some Lisp? Not so bad. It's closer to balance than, than, than I thought. But, uh, I mean, if you look at the people doing numerical algebra and, and doing high-performance computing, they're, they're working in Fortran and maybe C++, uh, depending on, it's kind of a generational thing. But... Uh, uh, there are, a, you know, there's a community of Lisp programmers. I, I don't uh, deny that, but it's much smaller. And, and, and the intersection with scientific computing is, is relatively small. I've totally forgotten what I'm maintaining. Uh, have you heard about Lush? Lush, no. Tell me about Lush. 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 
L-U-S-H. L-U-S-H. I know it's a description of somebody it's who It's a Lisp so universal shell, I believe, if I'm not right, wrong. And it, was, it is developed by quite known guys in um, machine learning. Okay. And it's quite, it was presented in NIPS community for a while. And what its emphasis is, is to create Lisp-like language, right? Or I'd say really it's Lisp, but very efficient for numerical computation. They uh, compile modules from C, and it does uh, on-demand compilation. Okay. So it, it's quite a cool tool, and they're now um, maybe already released even Lush 2, which is redesigned in many places. So if someone is really eager, because I'm not using it myself, I even forgotten that I maintain it, hmm. but if someone from Debian could comment in it or even pick it up, that would be more beneficial for Debian, and it's quite a cool thing. So, so maybe the way to put it is, who would rather program in Lisp than in Fortran? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know it well, but I guess it's a question of, it's Lisp, essentially. Please. If you ask about closure and such things, the moment you have a virtual machine, it's really hard to do numerical computations well. Um, so, you know, all those layered architectures or layered languages have, have big trouble with this kind of stuff. That's the main reason Fortran is still around, because they have these hacked up libraries from way back when that, you know, manipulate the bits in a way that nobody would bother to write today. Yes. Fort Fortran, sorry, sorry, sorry. Fortran is not running on the JVM. Uh, no, 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 but Clojure runs on, on the Java exactly, JVM, yes. which is, I imagine, has been the most uh, worked on JVM. Well, the, the, the standard classes in Java for numerical stuff are awful, you know, big decimal and those things. It's really bad. So, so you know, that's the big problem. Okay, but, the, but then this brings up one other, uh, one other small, the, the, the issue about, um, uh, virtual machines being too slow and all that, and you had a slide on using, uh, yeah, GMT, there, there it is, JMP. Uh, most of the programming languages, like Ruby has an exact, uh, and, and Python probably has, does, doesn't that have exact math libraries? No? The I, don't, I know Ruby, I knew Ru Ruby definitely has, you so, know, exact precision. So, so my bias, summary would be that the clever implementers use GMP rather than writing their own. Uh, the only people who write their own have a GPL issue. Uh, okay, so I, I, that's my, it's probably an incomplete picture, but, but as a short summary. Well, I also think that you always have to keep in mind that manpower is limited, so if you have a research group or something and a new PhD student comes in and they have to learn Ruby first but they know Fortran already or something, it could be a barrier of entry if you just different program languages sometimes. My feeling. Adam. Mike. Mike. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm curious, uh, uh, in terms of uh, similar barriers to entry, do you find uh, as a mathematics educator that some people uh, see uh, uh, tech as a, a, such a barrier to entry coming in? So uh, I don't make undergrad students use tech. And in fact, my career is a bit strange that at the undergrad level, I'm mostly teaching computer science and, and my mathematics teaching is at the graduate level. And at the graduate level, uh, they don't mind. It's an, they're invested enough in a single project that the, the overhead of learning tech is, is not so bad. I, I can comment on that. So I taught psychology for quite a while and I made undergraduates use it and it's for all of them shock and awe and about, you know, my own sample is about 30% love it afterwards and the others hate me. <laughs> in, in fact, I, I was a tech hater, I can confess, as an undergraduate. And I thought, oh my god, how can this be the right way of doing things? And well, when I was an undergraduate, uh, confession time, I mean, uh, you know, the first Macs were coming out. And, and the question is, 
these things are so easy to use, and, and why can't we do tech that way? Um, I think now that I've done these things for a while, I think most people in this room probably know that uh, it's always a trade-off between a learning curve and how easy it is to use when you're an expert, right? I mean, uh, there are things which are easy to use for experts, and there are things which are easy to get started with, and there are not so many which are both. Mike. Mike, give him the mic. Excuse me. Just a brief comment so you could ease your student's life. There is leaks, L Y X. Yes. And it's really, really easy to start, but it puts you in this kind of right culture of how you compose the document and use tiles and enforce proper formatting. So and then many people just jump off or many people stay and it's quite powerful. So for many applications, it's really, really appropriate. Right. How is Lix maintained these days? I, the, I have vague memories that, does anybody know the Lix story? Yeah. Oh, no. well, I, I cannot really give you details on how Lix is uh, updated. I know it's a, a, it works well and it's regularly maintained, but I don't know uh, its okay. status regarding upstream. I am uh, trying to start uh, my people, I mean, I, I am the technical guy in a social science uh, the institute. So, well, neither the professors, not even the publication department uh, know anything about uh, publishing with tech or similar, and I'm starting to try to teach them uh, with leaks. Uh, so far, I've seen their comments as, mm, it looks okay, but interesting, but then how can I uh, leave a larger gap or make sure that this is, mm -hmm. you know, all those things that you are used to with a word processor. So, uh, yeah, the, their minds are badly shaped, but there, I, 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 I think there is hope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, there is a package called uh, TechMax. Yes. Uh, I don't know if people are familiar. It provides like a very <coughs> less barrier of entry to do anything like typesetting. And another advantage I find is like it has like uh, like you know for example say you are writing a document and you want to plot something. It provides an interface for like GNU plot. You can plot graphs, and then like uh, you can call uh, languages like Octave and uh, like. R programming language, so you can like for example like typeset something and then like do demonstrate like an R uh, session, and then like generate graphs all in the same document. I personally find it like very useful. Uh, yeah, maybe give it a try. So so thanks for that recommendation. The one question I had, I know Lix, the underlying format is tech, or at least it's easy to get tech out of it. So suppose, do you know, have you ever tried to take a document from TechMax and, and export it to some other tool or how yeah. easy that is? I mean, I used to do some maintenance work for TechMax some time back, long okay. time back. Uh, yeah, they, I mean, the underlying format is actually like similar to, very similar to tech, but not exactly tech as such. But they do have like uh, stuff like export to PDF and export to LaTeX. Uh, and you can import LaTeX classes into TechMax and do some, do some work. Uh, but I mean, a couple of years back when I tried it, like the conversions are like not so great. But when you bring up the issue on like TechMax mailing list, usually the developer responds and like uh, maybe you can work out some customer solution or something like that. Okay. So I mean, expect some rocky road. But on the other hand, upstream is responsive and helpful. Yes, upstream is like, uh, I, find, I find it responsive here. Yeah. Thanks. Any more questions or comments? Uh, questions for Sylvester as well? I, I feel like I yeah, sure. took over your session. Um, I got sort of like a question. Um, how many are there of you in the, in the math? Is there any sort of like team going on or is it just like that math software is, you're just using 
basically as a mathematician, you're just using the good stuff from the rest of the archive and and then these uh, linear algebra or whatever symbolic stuff, which might also be used by others. So there's not really a core math package type of set. So a team isn't, well, except for Sage maybe apparently. So, so Sage, a team is needed just mm. because it's a hard packaging problem. What, what are the biggest, is it just because it's so convoluted with other uh, stuff or is it licensing or what, what are the biggest issues? Okay, so one, it's Python, uh, <laughs> which is either good or bad, but from a packaging point of view, apparently has some challenges. Um, the other is it's using a huge number of dependencies, really an astonishing number of dependencies. But the killer point is that uh, it's, uh, so upstream embeds everything, uh, and, and, and uh, so I'm summarizing a bit what I learned this morning. Um, upstream's point of view is they want uh, it to be, the system to be usable on systems like Windows where there's no package manager. Uh, and so they want to ship essentially binary packages or in worst case, one big blob <laughs> of source code that, that you can build. Um, and they have uh, strict version dependencies uh, on, on libraries. Um, and it's also releasing once a month. So I think those are all, I think that's all the challenges that I know about. Um, it, I, I guess one more challenge that I, that I do know about is that it's not just using library packages, it's using other systems. It, and it, and it's, it's a kind of front-end interpreter to other interpreters. Uh, and, well, I, my own experience with this is that it's fragile when, I, when I've tried to do things like this. But it would be worthwhile to package it, apparently. Uh, according to some, it has a large, it has a, it has a vibrant user community, I, I think. So it, that's why else should we package things, right? Other than, so there are, there are people who would care more about using Sage than using Debian. So. Did anybody follow an ISC or so? Is there any questions from there? Just wondering because uh, my notebook's sitting there, so I couldn't. I'll try to fix. It. Posted it yet? They just <laughs> say hi. I have a question. Just ask. Don't ask to ask. Yeah, no meta questions. Bombard them with the depackage bot. So, I, I, is there a question? Oh, sorry. I, do you have a question? What is it? Not really. Well, do I have a command? I just wanted to say something about Sage, which is while the licensing issues in the package that they release for downloading on private systems probably are not an issue. Uh, there are, in fact, components on their main system, which you can use through their web, which would have licensing issues. If, if the question from RC hasn't come through yet, I could bring forward one thing that we it agreed has. to forward. Okay. okay. Um, it's, you, uh, you talked about EDF software, Code Saturn. Uh, what is the status of Code Aster packaging? Um, we are... We, we are currently uh, working on it. Uh, most of the, the previous version, everything is on uh, SVN, on subversion, on the Debian Science repository. And uh, we are working on uploading the package. But as it is separated in small packages, we have to upload it one by one. So it is an ongoing work, and I hope we will be able to do it for Squeeze plus one, probably. There was one item in the math buff that we thought could be discussed this afternoon, which is a sort of, it's a bit of an internal question. So I don't know how many people here are actually involved with, with packaging in, in Good, good thing. I, wanted, I forgot about that in the beginning. So who of you, 
How many of you are scientists in a sense? <laughs> okay, and who, how many of you are like size admins who work because they work in a scientific department? Okay, as well. Quite, yeah, there's quite some overlap, I guess. I know. And yeah, how many of you are, what, what was your question? So, so, so I guess the question is how many people are involved with packaging scientific software right. for Debian? As well. Okay. So, so well, Adam, you are as well, right? Yeah. A so, bit. so the question on IRC this morning was are we falling victim to the not unprecedented problem of packaging too many things and spreading our efforts too thin? And do we have too many packages which do the same job? That's an excellent question. I think we should discuss that. I, I also wanted to discuss that in the round table because, yeah, I think we should make a short break and uh, fix the setup and then we'll get to the second talk. So in like seven, five to seven minutes. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, David. Yes.